Do you know it's story time? Story time, story time. Do you know it's story time in our classroom today? The title of this story is Velma Gratch and the Way Cool Butterfly by Alan Madison and Kevin Hawks. In this story, we're going to hear two words. We're going to hear the word metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is when an insect, such as a butterfly, changes. And we're going to hear the word conservatory. Conservatory is a place where butterflies get collected and you can go visit them. So let's begin. Velma Gratch and the Way Cool Butterfly. Velma Gratch was the youngest of the three Gratch sisters. Frida, the oldest, had gone through first grade first, followed by Fiona. Now it was Velma's turn. Here is Velma. The chorus teacher remembered Frida, her Frida best because she had a voice of an angel. The gym teacher remembered Fiona best because she ran like the devil. And the first grade teacher, Mr. Plexipus, finally remembered both sisters because of Frida's miraculous math and Fiona's spectacular spelling. Everyone from the class guinea pig to the principal had magnificent memories of the older Gratch girls, but they could hardly even recall Velma's name. They couldn't remember Velma's name. Look how she's feeling here. Oh, Velma, she looks very sad. This made Velma feel as if she did not belong in the first grade at all. She wanted to curl into a ball and roll right back into kindergarten. Of course you belong, cooed Velma's mother, trying to cheer her up. You've only just begun. Soon everybody will notice you. Velma couldn't wait. She needed to be noticed now. In chorus, she sang loudest so that the teacher could hear her best. In gym, she ran slowest so that the teacher could see her best. And in class, she refused to read and muddled her math. Mr. Plexipus lamented that she was the first grad sister ever to send to the principal's office. <gasps> she wasn't being a good listener. This brought a small smile to Velma's lips. So because she wasn't being a good listener, all the teachers were now noticing Velma. But were they noticing her for good reasons or bad reasons? She was getting in trouble, so those were bad reasons. Littlest Gratch, why are you singing so loudly in chorus and running so slowly in gym? Inquired Principal Crossley. Because, answered Velma, I want you to remember me just like you remember Frida and Fiona. The principal's owlish eyes opened wide. But my dear, those scratches are remembered for good things. Velma's small smile pretzel twisted into a full-blown frown. She's very sad, Velma. Science was Velma's favorite subject. She had learned many fabulous facts, like how a rainbow is born and why a volcano burps. The latest lesson was about butterflies. Mr. Plexipus explained that a butterfly starts as an egg. The egg turns into a caterpillar. The caterpillar disappears into a chrysalis, which is a little sac and does not come out until it has changed into a beautiful butterfly. He called this changing metamorphosis. So here's the word I was saying in the beginning of the story, metamorphosis. Velma didn't want to forget this extra long word, so she repeated it again and again as she walked home. So metamorphosis, friends, is when an insect changes into adult, okay? So just like a butterfly. It starts off as a little egg, and then it turns into a caterpillar, and then it forms into its chrysalis, okay? And then after it's done um, growing up in the chrysalis, it'll become a beautiful butterfly. Metamorphosis. 
Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. Frida, when you were in first grade, did you study butterflies? Velma asked her older sister. No, we learned worms, Frida replied. Fiona, when you were in first grade, did you study butterflies? Velma asked her middle sister. No, we found out about frogs, Fiona stated. Well, said Velma proudly, we are studying butterflies and, and, metal more for this. That's way cool, Frida declared, and Fiona bobbled her head in way cool agreement. Metamorphosis, Velma was trying to say. Velma read everything in the library about butterflies. She discovered that there are 20,000 different kinds, which was a lot. She adored the ones with colorful names, brown elfin, frosted flasher, sleepy orange, and the ones with funny names, comma, question mark, American snout, not to mention the ones with strange names, morpho, painted lady, gossamer wing, but her favorite butterfly of all was the orange and black monarch. When it got cold, all the monarchs would fly south to Mexico to stay warm. Velma thought this was an amazing coincidence because last winter vacation, she and her family had also flown south to Mexico to stay warm. In science, Mr. Plexipus announced that they would take a class trip to the Butterfly Conservatory Here's that word conservatory. It's a place where real butterflies were collected and cared for. So conservatory friends is a place where people collect butterflies and they take care of them there. And you can visit the butterflies. You can see butterflies in a conservatory. Because Velma didn't want to forget this extra long word, she repeated it again and again as she walked home. Conservatory, conservatory, conservatory. Frida, did you take a class trip in the first grade? Velma asked her oldest sister. Absolutely, we went to the museum, Frida replied. Fiona, did you take a class trip in first grade? Velma asked her middle sister. Absolutely, we went to the aquarium, Fiona stated. Well, Velma, uh, Velma proudly said, we're going to the can, can, can serve the story. That's way cool, Frida declared, and Fiona bobbled her head in a way cool agreement. So Velma was trying to say what word? Conservatory. The butterfly conservatory was surrounded by fancy flower beds and bedecked with banners of butterflies. Velma was so excited, her knobby knees wobbled, her spaghetti arms trembled, and her carroty curls shook. A sharp-nosed woman holding a clipboard introduced herself. I am your tour guide. Inside, a butterfly might land on you, but please don't touch its wings. Does anyone know why? Velma's hand shot up. Because they're made of teeny tiny scales that could rub off like dust, and that is not good, she explained. Precisely, said the guide. What's your name? I'm Velma, the youngest of the three Gratch sisters. Hmm, I don't think I know your sisters, the guide commented as they entered the rainforested room. So they're entering the conservatory now. Wow. It was a magical space slathered in tall trees and tangled vines. Water gurgled over rocks and butterflies of every variety. Giant swallowtails, short-tailed skippers, pygmy blues, and best of all, monarchs flew up to forever. The guide explained that when it got colder in a couple of weeks, she would take the monarchs into the park and let them go free so they could fly to Mexico. This traveling was called migration. Because Velma didn't want to forget this extra long word, she repeated it again and again as she walked through the rainforest. Migration, migration, migration. A gorgeous green comma rested on Randy's head. The class ooed. A baby brown elfin settled on Sandy's nose. 
the class odd. A big blue morpho alighted on Andy's shoulder. The class <gasps> gasped, but not one single butterfly landed on any part of Velma. Time to leave, instructed Mr. Plexipus as they neared the exit. A tear formed in a distant corner of Velma's eye. Oh, why do you think Velma's crying? Why is she sad? All she wanted was one single tingly touch of a butterfly. On a nearby branch sat a most lovely monarch. How she yearned to pet those velvety wings. She moved slowly. The class was leaving. One more inch. It was so pretty. She froze. If she touched its wings, it might. Velma couldn't do it. She couldn't hurt a butterfly. Come now, Velma. We have to go. Sadly, Velma turned away, and at that very moment, the most marvelous thing happened. <gasps> Ooh, what do you think happened? What do you think happened to Velma before she left the conservatory? Let's read and find out. <gasps> what do you see here? The butterfly landed on her finger. She got to touch her favorite butterfly. How does she look? She looks excited. Delicate wings slowly folding, antennas twitching, weightless and wondrous, the insect sat. Velma was in heaven. She was so happy. The monarch hopped from its branch and roosted right on Velma's finger. The bus is waiting, her teacher called. Velma placed her finger next to the branch. Bye-bye, butterfly, she whispered, but the monarch didn't move. We're closing, said the guide. Velma lightly blew on the butterfly. It didn't budge. Without ever touching the butterfly's wings, everyone tried to get the monarch to fly, crawl, or walk off Velma's finger. But nothing worked. So the butterfly didn't want to leave Velma. At last, Velma was told to leave with the butterfly still perched on her feet, on her pointer. How nice! The guy let her take the butterfly home. It stayed there on the bus ride home. There it is. It's on the school bus. It stayed there when she slept and was still there when she awoke. It stayed during gym, math, reading, ballet, soccer. Day in and day out, it stayed put on that pointer. Soon, everyone, from the class guinea pig to the principal, knew about Velma and her butterfly. Hmm, friends, why do you think that butterfly didn't want to leave Velma? It stayed with her while she was sleeping. It stayed with her while she was running in gym, while she was dancing and playing soccer. How come the butterfly didn't want to leave Velma's finger? What do you think? Mr. Plexipus lamented that Velma was positively the first scratch ever sent to the principal's office twice. This stuck an oversized frown on Velma's face. Velma, Principal Crossley commanded, it is time for that butterfly to go. Oh, I've tried to let it go, Velma moaned, but it just won't. Well, no one will ever forget this. The principal fumed. Velma's frown pretzel twisted into a small smile. Hey, I know what to do, she proclaimed. My Grayson! So she's trying to say migration. Remember the word migration? Migration means when the butterfly needs to travel far away, like Mexico. Velma paraded Principal Crossley, Mr. Plexipus, her class, Frida, and Fiona to the park. Car horns honk, beep, 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 beep. People yelled, hey, get out of the way. But despite all the commotion, the monarch did not move. A cool wind from the west blew through the field. In the middle stood the tour guide from the conservatory, carefully opening the enormous snack sack. A single monarch butterfly stepped out, looked around, and flitted away. It was trailed by ten and ten more, soaring up and up until the sky overflowed with thick clouds of orange and black. What's 
happening? wondered Frida. Why are you letting them go? demanded Fiona. My Gration, answered the guide. My Grayson, repeated Velma. The wind tousled Velma's hair and tickled her butterfly's wings. The monarch jumped onto her nose as if to give her a kiss and then took her flight to join its friends. Over the treetops it flew, over the skyscrapers, and up into the wild blue, orange, and black yonder on its way to Mexico. Velma! shouted Principal Crossley, and every eye turned toward her. Oh no, fretted Velma, sure that she was about to become the only Gretch ever sent to the principal's office three times. That was very cool, the principal said, and one and all bobbled their heads in way cool agreement. Then, with her fine finger where the monarch had sat still tingle, Velma, followed by her two sisters, floated home. The end. Thank you, friends, for joining me for the story, Velma Gratch and the Way Cool Butterfly. Have, have, have you ever gotten to see a butterfly? Or touch a butterfly? What is your favorite insect? Do you have a favorite butterfly? All right, friends, thank you for joining me for story time. Stay safe, have fun, um, love and miss you all. Bye, friends.